things that trouble your life, that cause you difficulty? What are those situations that seem to torment you or haunt you or keep you from becoming all God has called you to be? Well, a lot of times things happen to us or things come our way that have a way of uh, upsetting us, that have a way of derailing our week, that kind of have a way of interfering with God doing all he wants to do in our life. You know, I was reading a scripture in the book of Acts. It's up on the screen, Acts chapter 16. And it really, uh, it's about Paul in prison, or he didn't go to prison yet. He was about to go to jail. But prior to this, it's, he was uh, haunted, he was tormented by uh, a girl that had a spirit. As a matter of fact, let's read this scripture verse here in verse 16. Just three verses this morning. Once when we are going to the place of prayer, you know, let me stop for a moment. When you begin to do right, when you begin to put God first, when you begin to change your life, there's going to be things that come against you. Here's what it says. When we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Verse 18, she kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the spirit left her. We're talking about changing our life. We're talking about the things that trouble us. The things that have a way of interfering. First of all, it says, once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl. Friends, you are going to be met by things that trouble you on a regular basis. You are going to be met by things at the beginning of your week that are going to try to derail your week. It may come in a form of a phone call. It may come while you're going to the store and the checkout line and someone says something to you or cuts in on you. It may be when you go to work, your boss says something to you and it rubbed you the wrong way and you, you started out saying, I'm going to have a good week. I went to church and now I, I went to work and this happened. It may be something. Yeah, you started out and you got something in the mail. Monday was okay, the mail was good, not that many bail, uh, uh, bills. But then Tuesday or Wednesday, you open this and this unexpected bill. You thought things were working out economically, financially for you, and then this derailed you. We're talking about the things that trouble you. The Bible says it this way, in this world, you're going to have trouble, you're going to have problems, you're going to have difficulties. What well, says, first of all, we were met by a slave girl. You need to know, first and foremost, that you are going to be met by trouble. Well, that's very encouraging, Pastor. You're telling me first thing in the, in the sermon that I'm going to have trouble? Yeah, you are. Your week is going to be full of things that come your way that are going to try to throw you off. As a matter of fact, your life. Your life is going to be met by things that are going to try to derail you and keep you from becoming all God has called you to be. Listen, friend, God has a plan for your life. God wants to get you to where you need to be. God knows the desires of your heart. God knows the dreams and the things that he has for you. He knows your future and he wants to help you to get there. As a matter of fact, that's one of the promises as we serve God, that he will give us an abundant life. With that, though, the, you, there's an enemy. There's an enemy of your soul that wants to keep you down. I know that may seem new to you or maybe seem to be old-fashioned, but there's an enemy within this world that is coming against you and your family. And, okay, what, what do you mean by that? Being aware of the troubles and the things that are coming against you could help you throughout the week to recognize where these things come from. First of all, it says, we were met by a slave girl. You're going to be met by these things. Listen, who had a spirit? 
Now, what can we say about the troubles that you experience on a regular basis? You say, I started off my week fine, and then all of a sudden, this happened. I've decided that I'm going to beat this addiction, and then all of a sudden, someone called me. I decided that I'm going to change my anger problem, and I'm going to be nice. Then all of a sudden, something came your way, and it seems like, wow, you exploded. What about those things, those troubles that come against you? I will say, because you're a believer, because you're someone that is trying to serve God, it's hard, it, it's not easy, because you're decided to, uh, to allow Jesus to be your Savior, your Lord, your Master. Listen, it's a spiritual problem. What can we say about your problems, the things that come against you? First of all, they're going to come your way. They're just going to happen. They're going to be there. They're going to follow you. The Bible says that the enemy goes to and fro throughout the earth looking to see who he could destroy, to see he, who he could interrupt. And he's trying to destroy God's people, God's children. And it says here that the slave girl had a spirit. Friend, your problem is not your mother-in-law, is not your boss. Your problem is not your checkbook. Your problem is not that situation. Your problem is a spiritual problem. Now, I'm not saying that as a way to be demeaning. No, as a matter of fact, that should encourage you. Many times that we look to our situation and we say, this is our pro my problem. If I just had more money, if I just win the lottery, if I just meet this right person. And we have a way of labeling what our problem is. From the beginning of time, and it hasn't changed, there's two forces in this world. There's the force of good, of God, and there's a force of evil, the enemy. From the beginning of time, the enemy has desired to come against God and his children. And that's you. You have chosen that you want to be heaven bound. You have chosen that you want to be on that long, narrow road to heaven. And very few find it, is what it says in the scripture. But there's also a short, wide road, and it says many are going there. But you have chosen to be on that long, narrow road that Jesus talked about in the scripture. You have decided that you want to set yourself up. You've decided that God is the way, the truth, and the life. And that whoever comes after him shall be saved. So that's you this morning. So with that being said, your problem is not flesh and blood, as the scriptures talk about. The things that are coming against you, my brother, my sister, are spiritual. The attack of the enemy in your life is a spiritual attack. The things that you're dealing with on a regular basis are a spiritual attack. You, uh, if you were here last week, you know that we went out to um, uh, uh, this, uh, Washington. We saw my son who works out in D.C., we were out there just for a few days. We drove out there quickly and we came back. It was just actually a couple days. Uh, I took some work with me. Uh, uh, someone says, wow, uh, you thought that was, you said that was easy, but it was a 12 hour drive and took, you know, phone calls to do and different things. But anyway, we were out there for a few days. And I, you know, I, I, I was going to get some things done, but we we're checking the hotel. We saw my son and, and uh, we were checking in the hotel quickly. And I went up to, you know me, I, I, with my hands and I like to hug and these kinds of things. Well, I didn't hug the bell man, but I kind of wanted to really. But, uh, you know, I, I like to be nice. I like to lift up someone's day. Well, not all the time. Talk to my wife and kids. They'll say, well, why can't you be nice to me all the time? Well, well, that's a whole other issue. But listen. But, you know, uh, my wife parked along, you know, they, they wanted me to check in because the reservations were on my name. And I was a little upset. I'm thinking, we've checked in a lot of hotels. Can't you just let her check in and I'll be up and I'll show you my ID? Well, well, they said no. And so that started the ir irritation out a little bit. Well, you all have irritations throughout the week. Then, uh, then uh, I, I came back. I, I showed her my ID and I came back and I said to the bellman, I said, hey, and I just went like this. I said, hey, thanks for allowing our car to stay there. Right when I touch him, and it wasn't, you know, like after service, if that's you, I'm going to go like this, and I'm going to do it probably four or five times to you if you're around. And some of you are going to think, wow, that pastor is really strange. Well, it's, it's the Italian in me. No, I don't have no Italian, actually. It's Norwegian. But listen, but, but, you know, I went like this. As soon as I went like this and said, hey, thanks, man, the guy went up as hard as, really hard, bone to bone, and says, you don't touch me. And I go, whoa. 
you know, here I'm, you know, in another state, and I just wanted to be nice. I wanted to lift up his day. And he goes, you don't touch me. And I said, okay, brother, man, sorry. And I walked away. Listen, I looked at that as something, yeah, that person might be having a bad day. But you know what? I looked at that as an attack of the enemy. You say, well, that's a small thing. Yes, there's a lot of small things coming against you on a regular basis. There's a lot of things that are trying to upset you. There's things that are coming against relationships, your employees. There's things coming against families that are trying to tear you down. Here's what I want to say to you. There are spiritual attacks that come against you on a regular basis. You have made the decision to go forward with God. You have made the decision that you're going to give your life to God. Now, you're not the best at it. You're not perfect. You make mistakes, but you have given your heart to God. You love God. But listen, the enemy does not sit back idly and take that. Some of you made the decision that I'm going to beat this addiction. Some of you decided that I'm going to be a good husband, that I'm going to be a good father. You say, well, I haven't been the best in the, in the past, but you're saying today, I'm going to reach out to my kids. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, pray. I'm going to do what I know to do. You've made that decision. But then all of a sudden, the enemy says in the background, but listen, if I stand idly by, they might make it. They might win their whole family over. They may do damage to the kingdom of, of hell. And I don't want to sit by and let that happen. Now, that's the opposition. And here we see here that the girl had a spirit. Friend, I will say it again. Your problem, and I don't mean that in a condescending way because we all got problems. I just mean that in, in, a, in a reality way. Your problem, the things that come against you are spiritual. And it's good to know that in the, from the beginning that you are made up in flesh and blood. That you are made up of, of a mind, soul, but it's also a spirit. And you are been born again. There is a spirit and the enemy is coming against you in a spiritual manner. Jesus said it this way. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. I've come that you may have life. Listen, the enemy has come to kill, destroy your life. Now, now what do you mean by that? I'm just recognize we're just looking at the story so you have an understanding so that when you're going through things that you actually could count it all joy when you're going through these trials and tribulations when you're going through these things because you know if the enemy is attacking you this hard God has something good for you on the under end of it that you can you can be thankful that the enemy is if the enemy is wasting his time on me that maybe God has something good in store for my life. If the enemy is robbing me, if the enemy is trying to keep me down, then that means that God wants to push me up. That means that God wants to open a door for me. Listen, friends, your problem is spiritual in nature. The Bible says that we don't wrestle with flesh and blood. That it's principalities and powers that are rulers within the air, within this spiritual realm. It's important to understand. You know, on a regular basis, if I'm, if I'm uh, uh, praying or, run, or running throughout the week, what I do? I pray and I cast down strongholds over your life. Now, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I believe in the blood of Jesus, uh, uh, pleading the blood of Jesus. I believe in casting down strongholds. Listen. The Bible also says this, that how could, you, how could you pray unless you first bind the strong man? Now, that's a spiritual term in, in there, that you have to bind up those things that are coming against. Friend, it's important that you understand that from the very beginning that this is a spiritual matter in your life. Oh, let's continue on. It says here that she earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. Verse 17, the girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting. The enemy is going to harass you continually. Yep. It says here that they followed Paul shouting. Yeah. What can I say about the shouts in your life all week long? What can I say about those shouts that are trying to disrupt you to take away your peace? The enemy on a regular basis is shouting into your life. Shouting into your business, shouting into your families. You say, wow, pastor, you're not giving me any good news. Yeah, just let's stick to one or two more points down there. Then you'll see the, the, the complete picture. 
But the enemy is shouting into your, your, what, your future, your healing. The enemy is shouting in trying to disrupt you. The enemy is shouting in trying to confuse as you're trying to get over that addiction. The enemy's goal is to destroy and to shout and create confusion. The enemy wants to create arguments within relationships. The enemy wants to break up uh, families. The enemy wants to somehow keep you unhappy and somehow create division and get you sidetracked. That's the enemy's goal. But the Bible says that as we come together, and this is called a house of prayer, that's what it's supposed to be, a house of prayer. Nothing fancy, nothing, nothing uh, uh, great about it, but a house of prayer. And as we come and pray, we tear down strongholds. As a matter of fact, we're praying into our future. As a matter of fact, uh, our tomorrows, we're casting down those things that the enemy has formed already. So you, what we're doing is we're coming to the house of prayer. We're praying over our tomorrow. You say, well, the, the sound got interrupted four or five times. Yeah, I, I want everything to go perfect, but you know what it is? Listen, friends, with all that, that's all good, the music, but at the end of the day, it's the power of prayer that's going to win out. At the end of the day, it's, it's your relationship with God. The Bible says, now, I want as many as Joel, I don't know, uh, people, but at the end of the day, the Bible says when two or three are gathered together, there am I in the midst of him. Listen, friend, so you can agree together with your husband, your wife, with your child. You can agree together with, with Jesus himself if you're alone. And you can agree together that nothing that is formed or coming against you will prosper. Friend, God has the answer for you. God didn't leave you hopeless in this world. God didn't leave you hopeless for the attacks of the enemy. You have an addiction. You have something that you know is keeping you from God's best. You don't know how to get over it. You have something that is shouting on a regular basis. Oh, you're not, it's not really shouting to you, but it's a distraction. It's a telephone call. It's, it's, that, it's that letter. It's that thing that up, keeps popping its head up over and over. It's that past relationship. It's shouting into your life. And you're wondering how to deal with it. Well, that's what we're talking about this morning. We're talking about changing your life. We're talking about the things that trouble you. And we're continuing on into the next point. It says, the girl followed Paul. Well, if, if the enemy is following Paul, the enemy is going to follow you. The enemy is going to follow you through. And, I, and I'm sorry to tell you this, but the enemy is going to follow and try to distract you. You are on a new uh, wave. You're going to another dimension. God's bringing you into your future. You sense that there's a destiny. You sense there's something more. You're following that. Well, the enemy is there to stop you. The enemy is to, wants to keep you back. Because if you make it, if you keep going, if you decide that, that wow, and you convince yourself that if God be for me, who dare be against me? You keep going. Listen, the enemy is lost. The enemy has lost. And then you are going to succeed. Well, here we go. Paul and the rest are shouting. These men uh, are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. Verse 18 says this. She kept this up for many days. How long is this trial going to be, Pastor? How long is this hardship going to be? Many days. As a matter of fact, let me break it to you now. Hope I don't lose everybody in the sanctuary. It's going to be till you get home with Jesus. How long am I going to have this trouble? How long am I going to have these problems? I'm sorry to say, you know, and, uh, and I, I know, hope this doesn't go in. You're going to have trouble as long as you're on this earth. But listen, take heart. For Jesus has overcome this world. Take heart that Jesus given you everything you need to be. Listen. It's not that you're not going to have trouble. It's that Jesus is going to walk through you in the trouble that you have. It's not that you're not going to have cross experiences. It's not that you're not going to be attacked. That the enemy, it's not that you're not going to have these. As a matter of fact, the closer you get to Jesus, the more you are going to get attacked. As a matter of fact, I think the Son of God is one who is nailed to the cross. He endured. He, he went through hell for you, friends. Can you live life today 
going through the things, denied the enemy of his victory. Jesus denied the enemy of victory. It says he won over hell. As a matter of fact, he bruised the head of the enemy and he triumphed. The third day he rose again from the dead. I declare over your life that you're going to rise out of this thing. I declare over your life that you are going to find the victory that God has for you in, in your life. But listen, let's, let's continue on. She kept this up for many days. Okay, we'll grant you that, enemy. We'll capitulate against that, that you're going to continue to harass and, 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 and harm. But listen, let's go on here. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around. Well, how are you going to get victory over that addiction? How are you going to get victory over that problem? Eventually, you got to get so upset that you turn around and say to that thing. But let's break this up. Let's make it uh, two smaller points, if I can do that. Listen, eventually you got to get so upset at the way you're living and you s turn around. Well, let me indulge a little bit. The Bible says repentance is turning around. Now, now that's not completely what it's talking about here, but it's talking about turning around. So I don't know what your turning around is. It may have many ingredients in your turning around. It may be repentance. It may be so mad at the attack that you turn around literally. Listen, I don't know what's going on in your life. I don't know what you're being harassed with. I don't know what's coming against you, but you got to get so upset like Paul did here. You got to get so mad at the enemy. He said, I'm tired the way I'm living. I'm tired of being harassed by the enemy. I'm tired of doing nothing about it. I'm going to church. I know the sound may be messed up. Nathan probably isn't doing the best job on the sound. You know, the pastor needs to get a little better. He's not as good as Joel, but I'm going to the house of God and I'm going to turn my life around and I'm going to say to that thing, be now removed. The Bible says it this way. If you speak to the mountain, the Bible says if you speak to the mountain, be thou removed, it shall be removed. It didn't say if there's 20,000 people there. It says if you speak to the mountain. Here's what I want to do for you today. I want you to get in your spirit that you're tired of living the way you're living. That you're tired of your business being this way. That you want God to turn it around. That you're tired of your family being pillaged and ravaged. That your parents and nobody come to the where you're turning around. But here's what it says. Finally, Paul became so troubled. Maybe what our problem is, and sorry for the old fashion is coming out of me, but me are we troubled with what we're seeing? Or are we like dancing with the devil? Are we tired of being ravaged? Are we tired of being beat up by the enemy? There comes a place where you got to get so mad at your condition. Listen, I made it no mistake. I, should I say extra drug, drug addict? But whatever, I make it no bones that, you know, I come from a, a rough lifestyle. But at the end of the day, I had to not like where I was at. At the end of the day, I had to say, wow, you know, I don't like this. I don't like waking up with a headache. I don't like losing my money. I think that this is not getting me anywhere. I kind of think when this preacher told me there is a way to be saved, I kind of think this life is a little bit better. I'm going to start on that long, narrow road that very few go there. Jesus said it, not me. I'm going to start on that road. Listen, my friends, this is an invitation. This is an invitation to change your life for once and for all. This is an invitation where you're saying, I've had it with that old ways. I had it uh, with those things where the enemy is destroying me. And it says, finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around. I'm asking you to turn around. I'm asking you to say, well, but pastor, I screwed up so much. Well, I'm with you. I, I've, I've screwed up probably more than all of you. No, not, well, not, not put together. Well, a lot. How's that? You know, I'm with you. I don't like it. I don't like my mistakes. I don't like the ugly John. There's the ugly John and the good John. You're seeing the good John today. No, uh, uh, but listen, there's the bad John and there's the good John. What about you in your life? But all I'm saying is, can we say that this is not the way anymore? And I'm troubled and I'm turning around and I'm going with God. Can you go with God this week? Can you say that, uh, that the enemy may come in like a flood? 
The enemy may come in, but I'm raising a standard up over my family. I'm raising a standard up over my business. And I'm going to cover it in prayer. Well, here's what Paul said. Now, this is the good news. Finally, finally, Paul became so troubled. Some of you, finally, finally, I'm tired of uh, uh, losing it all. Finally, I'm tired of, uh, of waking up and, and not being there. you got to get so troubled with the, the way that the enemy's beating you up. No alcoholic can rise first till they hit the bottom. Until they hit the bottom and they say, I'm tired of being at the bottom. I was watching a movie, The Ride, uh, one Billy Graham put out years ago. I was watching it with my kids. Actually, we were coming back and uh, we, they were watching it. And, and, and I, 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 I couldn't see it on the front. I wish they had the video on the front so I could drive and watch the movie at the same time. I kind of think that's illegal. But, uh, but uh, well, they were watching it back. But I've seen it probably 10 times when I lived in China. I showed it to the university students and that. So I know the movie kind of by heart. But one time, it's, it's, it, the ride is uh, about uh, this, this uh, bull rider, and he was drinking, and he came to God, he came to Christ. But this, this girl came to him, and they fell in love later, one of those movies. But this girl came and says, what's your definition of bottom, boy? Now he's talking to this bull rider. What's your definition of bottom? And he said, from one bar to the X, you know, what, where, are you, where are this leading you? From one thing to another? You know, when are you going to start looking into your future? What's our definition of bottom? The enemy is trying to destroy us. Listen, listen. We got to come to the place where we turn around, listen, and say to the Spirit. Listen, here's what Paul did. Paul turned around. Some of you got to turn around literally. You're going to say to the Spirit, but you're going to get up off that stool. I can remember many times that I bought drugs and I threw them out right after I bought them. I wasted more money because I got convicted. Listen, the best thing you could do is get rid of them right then. I remember when, and this is the last illustration I'm going to give about myself, but I remember up on, up on the, up on the uh, place, and I just bought some stuff. I'm not going to tell you what. This was 17 or 18, I think. And I, I bought some, and some of this person witnessed to me and says, Hey, do you want to know about Christ? And, and I said to myself, I said, If you only knew how many times I have accepted the Lord, but for some reason it just don't work with this guy. You know, come Monday, I'm going to do all the same thing all over again. I didn't tell him that, but I was thinking it. And I, I was thinking, man, I just can't get free from this thing. I'm just one of those losers, and I can't do it. And, he, you know, right then, he said to me, he says, if you don't deny the Father in heaven, he won't deny you. And there was people all over the town, and, you know, I thought I was a tough guy and this, and they asked me to pray right then. And I prayed and I believed. Ever since that day, there was something different. Listen. There comes a place where you've got to be so troubled that you've got to turn around. I don't know what your turning around is. Maybe it's dumping that stuff. I went up to the apartment and I got rid of my stuff and I flushed it down the toilet. Here's what I want to say. I don't know what you got to do to turn around. I don't know if you got to get rid of that magazine and throw it in the garbage. I don't know what you got to do, but you got to turn around if you're going to get victory. You may have to apologize to that person. You may have to write a letter. I don't know. But it says here that Paul turned around. Now let's go to literally what he did. It says, in the name of Jesus, I command you. How are you going to break this thing that's coming against you? It's a spiritual attack. I know that we can do things a lot of ways, and this is only one way. But let me tell you something. you got to come against the enemy through the blood of Jesus. you got to command that thing to leave your family alone. you got to command that thing to somehow be broken. I don't know what this addiction... I kind of, you know what I think about addictions? I think it's a spiritual matter. Oh, I know that it takes on fleshly, but at the root of it, it's a spiritual matter. Listen, it says here, she kept us up. Finally, Paul became so. At the end of the day, it wasn't this girl. It was the spirit within this girl that he spoke to. I don't know what's the problem is causing arguments between you and your wife. I don't know, but at the end of the day, I will tell you, everything in my book is a spiritual matter. That don't give us no excuse, but here's what I'm saying. I believe in attacking it. Now, I didn't say go up to your wife and your husband and say, in the name of Jesus, and rebuke your husband and wife. I didn't say that. But you can do it in your breath. You could do it as your, they tell me my grandma would, uh, grandpa would come home drunk all the time. My grandma, under her breath, would pray and, and, and over him at night. All I know is it works and deliverance is there. Here's what I want to say to you, my brother, my sister. The root 
at your problem, the root that the troubles you're facing are spiritual in nature. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, in the name of Jesus, I command you to come out of her. I don't know. Don't go up to your boss tomorrow. Well, if they're really mean, okay. But get ready to look for another job. Uh, uh, but listen, don't go up to your boss and, and do that. No, you could do it in a meek way. You could do it in praying as you're, as you're folding that and doing your job in the name of Jesus. These things that are coming against me, I cast down every demonic intention, every demonic force against my family. I plead the blood of Jesus over my job. I plead the blood of Jesus when I leave here. When I leave here, I, I plead and, and I, I go out. We always bow our heads. Lord, every individual that's been in this church in the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over your family. Here's what I want to get. It's a spiritual matter. And, and Paul says, I command you to come out of here. You know what I like? At that moment, the spirit left her. Whoa. At that moment. One of Joel's favorite verses that I kind of adopted one of Joel's favorite verses I've kind of done, the moment you pray, Psalm 56 or 7, I believe, the moment you pray, the tide of the battle begins to turn. I'm one of those people, like when I got high, I want to get high instantly. Well, when I want to pray, I want, I want to see some, some, some happen. So listen, well, hey, it don't always be that way. But listen, I like this verse. Maybe that's why I like it so much. The moment you pray. Sometimes there's praise that take a lot of years. I understand that. But listen, it doesn't mean that, that you won't, it doesn't mean that it's going to maybe happen in the way. The Bible says that there was fighting in the book of Daniel in the spiritual realm. But the moment you pray, the tide of the battle begins to turn. Here's what I want to say to you as I close and I'm done. Listen, it says here that the moment that the spirit left her, you have to take authority over the trouble in your life. Oh, maybe I'll do it with the modern man up, as they say on TV. You got to take on that authority that God has given you. Your kids are doing wrong. I'm with you. A lot of my kids doing wrong. And I don't like it. But listen, at the end of the day, Listen, we have authority over spirits. They're going out on a Friday night and Saturday doing harm to their bodies. They, they're throwing away their future. In the name of Jesus, we could cover them in the spiritual realm. We could cast down demons that are trying to hinder their life. Listen, I know for a fact I wouldn't be where I'm at today if there weren't a few people standing in the gap and doing exactly what I'm telling you that we're doing it in my life. Listen, I'm asking you to get so tired of that thing that's troubling you. You're saying, it's ruining my future. i am had it. I'm doing something about it. In the name of Jesus, I'm living for God this week. In the name of Jesus, I'm going to have the mind of Christ this week. In the name of Jesus, I'm getting this. Some of you don't even know how to be free because you've been stuck so long. Well, this week, you're going to speak to that spirit. You're going to cast it down. And you're going to find deliverance. Deliverance in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Father, we love you. We honor you and thank you. Lord, we're so very thankful for your love and your mercy. Lord, we're so very thankful for your grace. We love you. We admit. Maybe part of the turning around is we just say, Lord, we're sorry. Sorry for messing up. Sorry for doing wrong. Sorry for saying things that weren't right. We're turning around. We're starting the process of turning around. We love you this morning. If there's someone here as we're bowing